and we'll mix some colour for the wall of this little building with some raw sienna and a little touch of rose madder in it, almost a, a pinky colour because the, when the sunlight catches this stone you do get almost a pinky glow to it. And this isn't for the roof at the moment, this is just for the walls. Leave a little gap for that window. There are two buildings in the photograph, but for simplification, I've, I've only I've decided just to include one of them. There's a bush in front with a hint of red in it, so I've, I've added a bit more rose madder to that mixture to give me that, and maybe a touch of burnt sienna as well, to give me that hint of red. I quite like that. I'm actually exaggerating it a bit. And then we want some green, so that it looks like these bushes in front of the house are growing up the wall and I've got a soft edge that then the colour gets stronger as we get near the water's edge so I need some more of this dark green mixture bringing me right down to the edge of the river there okay so that just needs a little bit of time to dry now that the little cottage has dried I can see that that red colour I put in has all but disappeared so I'm going to take some more burnt sienna with a little bit of rose madder number four brush and this is definitely thicker than it was before and let's try and reclaim that that hint of red a bit of dry brush work and then a bit of softening with clean water just to, to blend it in and give it a soft edge without it disappearing and then again I think just a touch more of the dark green around the base of it and I think a bit more of that dark green at this side here will really bring into focus the hard edge of the building of the little cottage I want some bright light on this riverbank so I'm starting with a touch of lemon yellow and just brushing it in right up to the dark green I put in earlier. Now that's a bit acid, a bit strong at the moment, but it's a good starting point and I can always drop a bit of green in to soften it with a mixture of aureolin and cobalt blue. But It still gives me a nice contrast where the sun's catching the spring grass. And then some darker green, aureolin and ultramarine with a little bit of burnt sienna and bring the darker green right to the water's edge. Still working on a, a wet background so that it softens into the previous colour. Just make them blend. And while I've got that mixed, we may as well add a bit of that on the bank at the opposite side. Add a touch of, there is a bit of bracken or weed at that side that's slightly red in colour. So I've added a bit of raw sienna and rose madder. And to balance it up, I'll add a touch of that bracken colour on the left hand side as well. And then just finally to bring us down to the water's edge again, I'm putting some dark green in. And that'll need a few minutes to dry so that I don't smudge it at the next stage. I'm now going to mix a brownie grey colour with burnt sienna, cobalt blue and a little touch of rose madder for these more distant trees at the right hand side. Touch more water in it. For the sake of simplification I decided not to include that little footbridge and these are quite thin and again I'm working to that shape that I put in earlier on which is now dried to represent the tops of these trees. So while that's drying, I can work on the foliage for the willow tree on the left hand side. I'm starting with some lemon yellow. I'm gonna make this quite thick because lemon yellow is quite opaque and Naples yellow, which I'm adding to it, is even more opaque. So it'll work with the dark background behind it so that you glimpse the dark through the fresh spring foliage. And then I'm gonna use the side of the brush and try to drag it down Getting that sort of drooping look that's unique to willow foliage. Not doing too much at first, taking care to build it up, 
this is very thirsty. This method of painting uses a lot of paint. So you need to stop every now and again and mix some fresh. Now to vary it, I'm going to get a smaller brush, a number eight, and I'm going to take some Naples yellow again, and this time add a little bit of raw sienna to it. So I've got a slightly different colour, but equally opaque. And we'll brush a bit of that in as well. I really get this feeling of overhanging, drooping foliage. And to save any smudging, we'll leave that to dry before we do the next stage. So I want a bit of shadow colour now. Cobalt blue and rose madder. Quite thin at first. And we'll put that shadow colour over the whole of the side of the building so that the light is actually catching the gable. And then with a clean damp brush, just soften that into the background. Then I've got a little bit of dark brown, some burnt sienna and ultramarine. And we'll put the underside of the edge of the roof in there. Put a little window in there as well. Just a little dash to suggest a window in that side. And there's a bit of dark for to represent the edge of the roof there. And perhaps a little bit of dark for the window pane. And I just need to leave that to dry before I can put a bit of colour on for the roof. So I've got some raw sienna with just a little touch of burnt sienna. Making it a bit thicker. And we'll add to that a touch of purpley blue, cobalt blue and rose madder. Just float that in. So the roof's got a bit of nice warm colour on it. Now while that's drying, I'll take the masking fluid off the water area. And before I paint the water, I just want to sharpen up the banks a bit where I've had the masking fluid. So I'm taking a touch of green, that's a bit of aureolin and cobalt blue, and then a bit of the dark green at the very bottom, right where it meets the, the water, just to sort of bring that to more of a point than I had before. And there's little areas here that need tidying up where we can create a little point with that dark green. And in the distance there, I can just do the same sort of thing to just give us a nice level line where that distant bank meets the water's edge, a hard edge where it meets the water, but a soft edge where it softens into the bank. And now hopefully the colour on the roof has dried and I want some more dark brown, some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And we'll just put a little bit of colour into, maybe to suggest a few tiles or slates on the roof. And perhaps a shadow under the eave. Now while that's drying, I'll mix some colour for the reflections in the water. 